Welcome, Wargamers, to some more narrative inspiration from those folks who won the latest lore competition. And today, I'm talking about the most cunning but brutal orcs around, and this was written by Kevin N. The leader of the Shadow Bash's war clan has become infamous in the realms. His name is Asgath Weird Eye. Asgath first appeared in the realm of shadows amidst the Age of Chaos. The Gut Ripper's war clan was being decimated by Skaven from the clan scryer, when suddenly there was a large explosion from the Skaven artillery, setting off a chain reaction and destroying the Skaven war machines. The Gut Ripper's mega boss looked across the battlefield, his gaze resting on a pale skinned auric with one shimmering white eye, cutting down the Skaven leaders before they ever noticed him. After the enemy forces fled, the Gut Ripper's mega boss searched for this mysterious orc, only to see him slip back into the shadows heads of the Skaven lords he slayed swinging from his hip. Throughout the Age of Chaos, there are sightings of Asgath in the realms except Azir, joining battles and turning the tide by hitting the enemy where it hurts the most. Oryx around the realms tell tales of the Shadow Orc and that is blessed by Mork directly. Over the decades of his travel, Oryx from every realm have flocked to follow Asgath. To the edges of the realms, but only orcs the mega boss himself chooses are allowed to join the shadow bashes, making the war clan smaller than most. He's very picky. Asgath Weird Eye has a knack for finding hidden realms and magical items. So some of his clan says his glowing eye gives him the power to see through illusions, while others say he can see the path of Gorka Morka. Asgath never confirms, but nor denies the claims of his clan letting them believe whatever they want. In the aftermath of the Necroquake, the powerful magic concealing the Storm Vaults was severely weakened, and Asgath became obsessed with them. So, the Shadow Bashes have been blitzing through the realms, plundering the vaults of the Hammer God. However, this has not gone unnoticed by the God King. Lady Iona Brightmane, a knight questor of the Astral Templars, has been tasked by Sigmar with tracking down the Auric leader known as Asgath Wardai. She sets off immediately traveling through the shattered peaks of Chamon and over the boiling seas of Akshi to find her prey. After weeks of tracking, Iona has found her target. Asgath travels through the charred forest of the searing path of Akshi with his war clan. The megaboss sends the majority of his forces to assault a nearby corn fortress to make sure that they can loot the storm vaults uninterrupted. Weird Eye, flanked by the two best warriors from the Shadow Bashes, Grunta Boss Ogdrot Gold Teeth and Brute Boss Urbak Skyclaw, move into Tsar Ungor, a once great chaos uh, Duarden hold built inside of an active volcano. Now, only dilapidated ruins remain after Dechapa's war clan uh, raised the fortress in ages past. Iona waits for the bulk of the war clan to pass before moving into the ruins, and as she enters Tsar Ungor, she can feel the chaotic energies that linger like a phantom haunting the grounds. Tracking the Oryx was made easier with the veil of ash covering the area. Entering a corridor lined with large statues of demon smiths that once ruled over this fortress, Iona passes one of the statues as it suddenly topples over, throwing ash into the air, nearly landing on Iona. Dazed and confused, she slowly got to her feet as she heard footsteps circling her. The Night Questor, unable to see anything, drops into a defensive stance and tries to discern where her assailants are. There is a moment of silence, then she is struck from behind. The blow glanced off her armor, hearing muffled laughter all around her. Suddenly a blade finds its mark. Striking her back, she swings around. Next, her shield arm is cut. Where are you, coward? Iona shouts. Right here. One of them taunts. A flurry of attacks catches the foe unseen, burying her warblade into the oryx's thick armor. As the ash settles, her foes are revealed. All the combatants are covered in ash and soot. Iona's breathing is heavy. She pulls her blade out of Urbak, pushing him back with her shield. The two oryx step back as shadows engulf Iona. A mighty swing from a massive axe crashes down just as Iona brings her shield up to meet the blow. Her arm buckles and breaks under the sheer force of Agrath's chopper. 
With Iona's arm barely able to lift her shield, she removes it, her body trembling. Her blood sizzles on the ground as it drops from her arm. The ruins of Zar Ungor shake dislodging huge rocks that come crushing the ground near Asgath and Iona. With no hesitation, Iona releases the full fury of the heavens on Asgath. He dodges a few slashes, but is quickly overwhelmed. The Night Questor's debilitating attacks are stopped as one of Asgath's amulets begins to glow. As the orc stands, he grips Iona's weapon, and a geyser of boiling blood erupts between the two. Iona and Asgath are only able just to dodge the torrent of sanguine energy. Ogdrot takes the opportunity to lunge at Iona, as she frantically blocks a surprise attack. Urbach's cloak sets ablaze and carries him off the ground, barreling into Iona, knocking them through a wall into an open room where there's like visible entry to the volcano below. Bridges line the sides of the volcanic walls, an anvil split in two sits on the ridge with the skulls, blood litters and mutated Duarden placed around it. The knight's quest door headbutts Urbach until he releases her. The champion of the heavens raises her broken arm, grasping her warblade in both hands, and issues a challenge to the mega boss. Asgath calls off both Ogdrot and Urbach, pulling out a jagged blade that shadows seem to linger around from his back. All of Asgath's movements are blurred, and Iona can no longer hear his footsteps. As the orc charges forward, Iona dodges, but her armor is still clipped by the blade. She swings, managing to cut the Oryx's arm. Both warriors trade blows, but each strike from the Mega Boss seems to weigh down the Astral Templar. Iona can feel the shadows that once coalesced around the jagged blade, now swirling around her to hold her in place. She can hear whispers twisting the truth, trying to break her. Eventually, Iona can barely lift her sword, and this is when the bloodied Mega Boss swings. With a bolt of lightning searing his weapon, the Night Questor is slain. Now with nothing standing in their way, the orcs push deeper into Tsar Ungor. After breaking a few walls down and blowing a hole in an unfinished mining shaft, they find the Storm Vault. After disposing of the mechanical guards, the orcs begin plundering everything that they can find. Asgath has come for one artifact in this vault specifically, and that is the Horn of the Realms. A great war horn carved out of a god beast's tusk, engraved with every realm stone. It's said that if the wielder is worthy, they can call the realms to empower them with the very essence. The trio of orcs meet back up with the war clan, distributing the magic items they find amongst the orcs. Asgath, weird eye, feels a searing pain from his glowing eye, when it subsides, he begins to march. His destination is Gur, Realm of Beasts. And that concludes the actual story. So let's talk about why this is cool, like why I think it, it ranked so high uh, during the lore contest I did. One, Shadow Orcs, right? I mean, come on, that's just a really cool thing. I love the idea of the sneakiest of gits, you know, kind of really favoring Mork over Gork, so to speak. I think another cool thing about this is the fact that, one, uh, there's very great descriptions, if you didn't catch them, of artifacts in practice. Like one of the orcs was using the flaming cloak, uh, there was a dagger that was wreathed in shadow magic, those kinds of things. And so uh, kind of playing those into a story is something we don't see a whole lot. Obviously, we know as gamers that we can choose artifacts, but we don't typically see like you know, specific artifacts in most black library novels giving power. Usually it's very character driven, which is cool, uh, of course, but uh, it's cool every once in a while to be like, you know, it's kind of a game thing nudging its way into the stories. Additionally, like the whole premise of this short story was just, you know, um, them fighting off a night questor, which one, we don't see a lot of stories that involve night questers. So that's a win to me, but also just that it's a very, it's like a good snippet, a little vignette of something that's happening everywhere in the realms. You know, it's a current event thing, meaning they everybody's racing for access to these storm vaults because they're just full of weapons to stuff to the gills. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's ebb and flow and push and pull with that. None of them go uncontested. And so this is a good little like snippet of time to be like, this is what it looks like when someone has a mission and, you know, Sigmar is like, go hunt them down, go stop them. And things go terribly wrong for a storm cast. This is a, like a sub faction, you know, the Shadow Bashes specifically, is a war clan that I would absolutely like to learn more about. 
One, because he has named characters for all of the battalions, basically, is really what it comes down to, as well as the mega boss, and I really do like them. And this is absolutely something that can be fielded as an army. I'm sure that the Shadow Bashes, because well, it would be the mega boss and two battalions, right? The the one with Gore Gruntas and the other one with the Brute Boss. So absolutely, it's very reasonable. They all have assigned um, artifacts and that kind of stuff in this story. It's fantastic. This is the kind of story that like is really neat to see players develop based around their specific faction. So Kevin, you did a great job. You knocked it out of the park, buddy. Thank you so much for everyone for contributing to this. And I'll catch you next time in my next Age of Sigmar lore video. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was made possible by the folks over here to the left. These are my top supporters over here on YouTube and on Patreon that keep this channel going. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a supporter and get some cool things in the process like exclusive pictures and interactions with me and get your questions answers here on the channel, go ahead and click any of the links down below or the join button on the community page over on YouTube. Regardless of your choice, I wanted to thank you so much for joining me with this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Happy Wargaming.